Hey, what's up, Vital Stride Running Group? I am doing a live video today to answer one of the most popular questions I've been getting recently. This was asked recently by Cody, and he's talking about what he can do about his mid-foot pain. When privately chatting with him, he talked about how he had an actual injury in which he overstretched the inside portion of the foot, so right in here, and it's never felt the same since, and now it's been painful every time he tries to run and it's the main thing that keeps him from being able to run consistently so i'm going to share with you how you can mobilize the different joints in your foot then start to strengthen the arch of your foot to be able to stabilize your foot and help transfer um, the ground reaction forces all the way up your leg and then also how to integrate the different chains of muscles that tie into the foot because you're not just a foot or you're not just an ankle or a knee. It all works together. So a lot of people put their most of their focus only on the foot. And I'm today going to put most of our focus on the chain of musculature that goes all the way up your entire body. So the very first thing is within the foot. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. So he's talking about getting pain right on the inside portion here. And this is the most common thing I see associated with arch pain plantar fasciitis, or even decreased range of motion of the big toe. Um, it's usually something going on with the, the two bones right here in the middle, which is the navicular and the first metatarsal head. So right at the very top of the arch, the apex of that arch is where those two bones meet like this. And they're supposed to have a nice like windshield wiper type of motion with how they move. And so if this is either collapsed down or if there's injury like I believe Cody had with a, a sprain of the ligaments between those two bones then the integrity of those joints aren't going to be the same anymore um, and then over time your foot's going to compensate uh, in one way or the other so you'll typically get scar tissue and decreased range of motion within all the other 26 bones within the foot so the very first thing I like to do with any part of the body especially if you've had an injury is first mobilize the joints um, so I'm going to take you through a very quick mobilization of the entire foot, which I was introduced to by Dr. Lance Von State, who is in this group as well. Um, so shout out to Lance who showed me this. And this really helped me after I fractured my big toe in a horrific steeplechase accident in the CCA Conference Championships in 2009. Uh, but I broke my big toe and ever since I couldn't splay my toes anymore and I wasn't able to move my big toe until I learned how to do this. So the very first thing you can do is first just try to create separation between all of your toes. And so you can grab your big toe and then the second toe right next to it and just pull in opposite directions. So you're getting some flexion, you're getting some extension, you might feel some crunchiness, you might feel some stretching. If you feel a burning sensation, that's okay. That is a stretch of the ligaments between those joints. And then I'll move on to the different, the other toes. So I like to create space by separating and then again, flexion, extension. So we're first working with the very distal phalanges here, going into the next toes and we're just working our way all the way to the pinky toe and then going and separating and then flexion and extension. The most common thing that we see is a lot of times the pinky and the big toe will approximate like this and a lot of times people get that bunion formation because they're wearing closed toed shoes so often and then people their foot is stuck like this rather than being able to splay like that and so that was one of the main things that got had those vibram five finger shoes that got so popular is because people were starting to actually splay their toes naturally uh, but once you've gone through flexion extension then you can go to the middle part of your foot and do go like a rubbing back and forth so the, right up from where the toes are if you were to bring your toes up when I do that you can see how the tendons start to come into uh, line and you, you can actually see them so that's along the same plane line as the bone so you can just go on one side and the other and then rub back and forth and then move to the next one rub back and forth and so in the middle arch part of the foot you're getting some movement back and forth and then all the way at the end and then my favorite part is now then starting to jam your fingers in between your toes and for a lot of people this will be near impossible at first but the more you do it you'll start to be able to create space and separation between all those joints and the joint capsules and the ligaments and so really just at least getting your fingers in there is the first step and then trying to squeeze your hand which will stretch the joint capsule and then go backwards and forwards so you're just creating space within those joints and then getting them to move through their natural range of motion 
And ideally, this would not be comfortable. So if it's not comfortable, you're doing it right. If it feels significantly worse the next day, you probably injured yourself. So find somewhere in between. Um, going back and forth and then grabbing your midfoot and doing the same thing, but with twisting. So twist back and forth, which is the natural motion of your foot. Your foot should unlock and twist as you're going from your toe to your heel to back on off, off your toe again. So we've gotten flexion, extension, and then rotation of those joints. Now we're gonna grab the middle arch part of the foot. So again, where that apex is, grab on either side, and then like you're wringing out a towel, you're gonna be wringing the foot out side to side. And so just getting some movement of that joint. And then we're gonna go back onto our toes so you can stretch the bottom part of the toes and the plantar fascia by tucking your toes under and sitting back onto your heel. You can lift up, splay those toes out even more, and then sit back again. If that feels like it's too much pressure, you can always be up like this and just put some weight onto it with your hand. If you feel like you want to get more into the stretch, you could grip the ground with your toes and sit back. And so as I actively grip the ground, then sit here, I feel that go up into the entire plantar area of the foot. And then last part is sitting back onto the heels this way, which will get more of the flexor retinaculum, so the front part of the ankle joint here. You can put your body weight to the outside, straight ahead, inside, and then I can even push my toes into the ground and lift my knee. And so you're getting a whole stretch of the top part of the foot there. So after that, now I at least have the mobility of the entire portion of my, my foot. If you, again, if you're having pain on the inside portion of the arch here, I'd probably spend more time doing that ringing out of the actual arch because that's where that first metatarsal head is. Um, the most common thing we see as chiropractors is often an area of, um, here which is getting stuck. And so a, a thing that you can do to test this on yourself is stand up and then lift your big toe up. And so seeing how, how high does that side lift compared to your other toe. If one toe you're able to lift up like that, and then the other one, you have no range of motion. We call that a functional halicus limitus, which you're getting stuck either here or in the middle part of the arch. And so those are areas that we would use a chiropractic adjustment to actually increase the normal motion of those joints again. And so if you've been having recurring foot pain, arch pain, toe pain, or the plantar fascia pain, I would, I would get that area checked and it might need to be manually adjusted by a chiropractor. Um, so that's something we would do. And now, so then the next component is, now that it's mo moving well, wanting to strengthen that. So the biggest thing that most people are prescribed for plantar fasciitis or just strengthening the arch is toe curls. So they're just told to curl their toes this way, but really that is getting the flexors of all the digits in the phalanges, but it's not actually getting the arch. So there's an actual component of the foot, which is the brevis, which needs to be strengthened differently. And so this is what we do with what we call a short foot exercise. So we're not going to be squeezing with the toes, but instead you're going to be approximating your big toe towards your heel and creating a lift of the arch. So it's trying to squeeze here and lifting up. And so if, if you've never done this before, it's going to be probably near impossible at first, but the more you can start to build that connection between your foot and your brain, you'll be able to lift that. The very first time I ever tried this, I couldn't do it, and then I watched Kill Bill, and there's a scene in Kill Bill which she becomes paralyzed for a little bit, and she's sitting in the back of the car, and she basically is just like, move your big toe. And after thinking about it really hard for a while, she starts to move her big toe. I always think about that as trying to build that connection from your brain to your foot. So trying to lift the arch here by squeezing the big toe towards the heel, and so that arch will naturally raise, and then you're gonna hold that. So you're activating the muscles that stabilize the arch, and then holding that is how you're gonna create the stability to protect that middle part of the foot again and start to reestablish good foot, foot mechanic, mechanics. So you could do that just while you're sitting or while you're standing in place, but just start to do some of these short foot exercises I would do like 15 to 30 of them at a time, two to three sets, and start to feel the inside portion of the arch. So you're gonna lift, hold for three to five seconds, relax, lift, hold for three to five seconds, relax. And you should feel like this arch part of your foot is gonna start to cramp up. That's how you know you're activating the right muscles. 
And then lastly is then to start to integrate the chains of the muscles, which there is a chain which runs up the medial portion of the foot. So it goes under the big toe, wraps up through the inside portion of the ankle, up the back side of the calf, into your um, adductors, and then into your groin, and then wraps crisscrosses up into your diaphragm. And something I want you to watch here is just by internally rotating my hips, I can get a raising of the arch. And so if you are properly integrated, you'll have that connection from your hip to your foot. If you are not, your ankle is going to want to roll inward like that. And so what I want you to try to do to start to train this is to keep the outside portion of your foot, the inside portion of your foot, and your heel all on the ground. So watch as I just, all I'm doing is inwardly rotating my hips and my arch will raise up. Just like that. So I'm rotating in here and then my arch raises. And so I do it better on my right foot compared to my left. My left is one I've had problems on in the past, but rotating inward. Yes, you can see my knees collapse in, but I have this the activation of my adductors on the inside, so that's okay for right now. But starting to rotate in, turn on that chain of muscles, and lift the arch with my hips. So if you can start to do that, we can then do various exercises to start to train that. The very first one would be something as easy as squats. So I know with squats, you always have a little bit of external rotation of the, of the the feet, which is fine, but we're also going to get inward rotation of the hips. So here, you're going to do that short foot exercise to lift the arch and then hold that as you go through a squat. So as I'm going down, I'm making sure that my arch doesn't collapse inward. I'm holding that as I also then go back up, checking back in, rotating the hips in, squatting down, keeping the arch engaged and raised, coming back up. So if that collapses in, then you have a lot of work to do. If you can do that really well, then you can progress to the next step. Next step I would do is a single leg RDL. So splaying the toes, short foot exercise. You can rotate the hip inward and then hold that arch engaged as you really slowly go through a single leg. Eccentric RDL, so going down really slowly as you send your hips back, coming back up. And if you don't have the strength, again, your foot's going to go like that. Next part, so after you've done that and you feel like that's doing really well, you can do step ups. So I have a bench, I'm gonna show you here. So engaging, again, arch, creating that lift. Pull this back a little bit. Create that lift here, feel that arch engage, and then I'm gonna push through equal pressure with my big toe and my heel as I go through a single leg step up and come back down. Keep that arch engaged push up, and then control all the way back down. So those are various exercises that you can do to start to integrate the lifting of that arch and working up with the chains of the muscles here. Next thing is comes from foundation training, which is a wide founder. So you'd be in a wide set here. I'm just gonna show you that one leg. You're gonna do that inward rotation of the hips, lift with the arch, and then send your butt back as you counterbalance forwards. And then keeping that lifted, I can then go uh, up the opposite way, so if it's my left foot I'm wanting to train, I'm going to go up to the right, lengthening from here all the way up into my groin, and then opposite shoulder, sitting the butt back, coming back down. So those are different things that you can do to start to mobilize the foot, then strengthen the foot, and then integrate the chains. If you do that on a daily basis, you'll start to notice you have more strength uh, with your foot as well as the whole lower leg. And then um, I encourage you to do this right before you run as well so that you don't have the tendency of your foot over pronating or collapsing inward as you're going through the normal range, range of motion as you're running. So that is how I would start to improve uh, different arch pain, midfoot pain, foot pain. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If you know anybody who's been struggling with foot pain, uh, invite them to this group, tag them in this video. This is an open and free group. So if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Uh, try to get on as soon as often as possible to shoot these live videos. I hope everybody's doing well and I, we'll see you next time.